Hey, it's really from Hubble Digital. And for this week's HubSpot question of the week, I'm going to be talking about sequences and whether we should be looking to use one sequence for all of your outreach, or you should be using multiple sequences and tailoring them depending on the way that individual comes into the website. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Yeah, one of the questions I had this week was all based around sequences. And should you be using one sequence or should you be using multiple sequences? And it was a really interesting question. And, and uh, as you can see in the background, I actually wrote a blog all around kind of uh, best practice in, in terms of sequences and, and back in 2019 now. Um, so about six months ago. But uh, yeah, everything in here is still um, uh, very valid in, in terms of when you should be using sequences, different types of sequences. I've also mapped out our process, our outreach process. Um, uh, with example emails and example tasks and things like that but in terms of within the portal um, something I wanted to highlight to you guys is um, when you go in and you can see we've got a variety of different sequences here that we've created personally um, but as you go in and click create a sequence HubSpot have actually tried to inspire you as to different kind of um, uh, scenarios that you might want to actually build out a sales sequence around so you can see here you can obviously start from scratch there's completely fine but if you look down there's the recent conversion so someone that's just come onto the, onto the site and, and downloaded something whether it's an ebook a white paper um, maybe it is a downloadable webinar something like that you can actually build a follow-up sequence based around that and HubSpot instead of starting from blank canvas you've actually got a framework there and if I click on that for example it's going to populate some uh, example templates some tasks with specific um, uh, time delays between those, uh, a second email, for example, and it's got prompts within there, plus the personalization. A really, really great uh, starting point for you uh, to, to consider great. So for our recent conversion, what type of content do we want to be pushing out? What type of messaging do we want to be talking about within our sales emails? And you can actually uh, use this as, as a structured starting point. Um, obviously, it is only uh, email based, uh, except for this one call. We'd usually look to um, uh, recommend kind of anywhere between sort of four and f four or five outreach process um, elements, and uh, at, at least three calls um, at a very minimum. Um, make that um, uh, with a couple of voicemails in there. Um, uh, but also cross over into social as well. So make sure you're connecting with them on LinkedIn, and you can actually do that by um, uh, selecting uh, uh, different tasks. But before I actually go in and, and, and look to alter one of these, um, trade show or conference follow-ups is another uh, uh, important one to uh, to build a sequence around. Obviously, at, at the current uh, landscape and, and time, uh, it's not applicable um, because rarely are any trade shows or conferences actually taking place. Uh, with COVID, um, but in the future, there's go events will come back around. Uh, you'll be running uh, events yourself. Um, this is also an opportunity to, to use this as a framework, yes, but obviously make it virtual based. You might be running virtual events or virtual webinars or, or conferences um, that you actually want to build a sequence around. If anyone then signs up to that, um, you can use this as a framework so it was great meeting meeting seeing you at conference x this week as we discussed we were able to provide company blah blah, blah. Um, obviously you'd be great to see you sign up to our conference our virtual conference um, or you attended a conference and, and uh, you you ended up having a chat virtually with this individual um, a really nice way to to follow up and it's it's all about providing them with um with content uh, with a bit of transparency as to what you do and how you help people um less of the hard sell but more of a here's a load of information around us um let's have a conversation essentially then you've got more specific ones such as a product or a demo request so if someone comes through your SaaS company uh, they've requested a demo um, they might miss your first email so you need to constantly uh, be aware to follow up with them. and these guys are bottom of the funnel um, so they are going to be keen to have that conversation so based around um, that you'd want to actually automate the the outreach process so you can uh, talk around great here's a here's uh, um, a overview book a meeting with me and then again book a meeting with me so let's get this demo in place um, you probably want to expand this out but it's just a starting point as we were saying then you've got other versions of this like prospecting so for uh, potentially cold uh, 
cold leads out there, um, you've got a research-driven reason email. So basically, I've done a load of research on you. This is why I think you're a great fit for our company. Um, let's have a conversation. And obviously, you then dive deeper into examples and, and key takeaways just to show you show them the value um, there. And likewise, obviously, you haven't been able to connect. It's uh, This is a classic email where they're saying, great, uh, it's either it's one of these reasons can you point me in the right direction which one it is thanks anyway but it's no interest i want to talk let's get to the time uh timing isn't right but i'm interested in talking at a later time um so yeah it's um it, it's a really nice starting point and it's certainly worth having a look at all these different variants just to kind of inspire you might be just using one sequence at the moment and and using that as a kind of a blanket approach to all leads coming in um there are going to be different leads at different stage of the buyer journey and that have come through from different sources so potentially are looking for different engagement approaches so consider that when uh, you see leads come in and uh, yeah use these as a framework to, to go ahead and start um, start building out some some of these sequences use the big orange button create a sequence click on that and as you go through you're actually going to be able to go through and start editing um, you might want to edit the text, you might want to edit the time delays, or you might actually want to add in some additional ones. So all I did there was click on the plus and I've added it between the first email going out and the first task being set. And you can see on the right hand side, you can actually incorporate LinkedIn Sales Navigator as well. So you might want to actually send them a, an email on LinkedIn Navigator. And what you do there is send the email, the type, yes, that's fine. And priority is going to be high. And you can add it to a queue. So this, all this is doing is setting you to a task, but it's a focused task around a specific topic. Um, so this one sent it uh, in mail, and then you've got call as well. Uh, two different tasks, uh, one day apart, but for two different purposes. And then you obviously move through. And once you're done with that, make sure you're naming it up here. And then you go through and click save. And that's essentially it. Then you can start enrolling contacts on your uh, on your new sequence. So yeah, a uh, very simple one, but um, it, it's something that uh, people certainly uh, know the tool, uh, but they don't necessarily understand uh, what's the best practice approach to, to building out your uh, your sequence um, catalog. So yeah, thanks so much, guys. Uh, tune in next week for the next uh, uh, HubSpot question of the week. All the best. Bye bye.